when we release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and it starts causing climate change, a fraction, a pretty, about one third of this carbon dioxide dissolves in the ocean which means that our climate is not warming up as fast as it might otherwise, because not as much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere because about one third or one fourth of it went into the oceans. So that sounds like a good thing. But now we've got the oceans with getting more and more carbon dioxide in them. And what does that do? The carbon dioxide dissolves in the water, making carbonic acid, and then there's a few other chemical reactions, and the upshot is that it causes the waters to become more acidic. Uh, I don't think I want to go into a whole, so what a pH scale is. No. Let's just say the water is more acidic. Now, why is that a problem? The, it's a problem because um, being more acidic, it affects shell formation. And there are many kinds of organisms in the ocean that make shells. There's tiny plankton called forams. There are animals like clams and lobsters, mussels, oysters. And it's in those mollusks where we see some of the biggest problems starting to happen. Um, initially, a mollusk starts out as a larva of the baby. You know, they mate, and you've got the embryos in the water. The embryo turns into a larva. The larva, tiny, ha in order to make it, has to find its way to the bottom to settle and make a shell. That's the critical stage, is making that shell. And the water is too acidic, it can't make the shell well or enough or whatever. And um, these were problems that were first came, that actually seen in the West Coast, in Oregon, in an aquaculture, a shellfish aquaculture facility. And they had a failure of, of the, um, the larvae to become, to be metamorphose is the word. Uh, this was like uh, 10 years ago or more. And they got scientists involved to see what was happening. And it turned out that the water, they were pumping up water from deeper down, had, was more too acidic. And so now they can add alkali, basic, you know, to, to change it in the aquaculture facility. So they can fix it, but that fixes it for the, what they're growing, it doesn't fix it for the clams out in the wild. So it's making a shell is one of the major issues in ocean acidification. There are many other effects, including effects on behavior in fishes, as well as in many other animals. Um, particularly behavior that depends on the sense of smell. Many animals in the ocean, fishes and, and crabs and lobsters, sense of smell is really important. Think like a dog, you know, animal. We're more familiar with the sense of smell is very keen and very important. And, and it's used by many fishes for navigation, homing, salmon going back to where they came, where they were hatched upstream, they live in the ocean, they gotta go back, they go back to the very same place. Ac acidification in the water impedes their sense of smell. Uh, a sense of smell is also important for um, predators detecting their prey. You know, I said, this is the, you know, or for prey detecting their predator, and they can smell either the predator or they smell an injured member of their own species, and that tells them, I gotta hide, I gotta get out of here. And that's impaired also um, by acidification, so that predators can be impaired in their ability to catch the food, the prey can be impaired 
and picking up the fact that there's danger here and I got to hide or go away. And, and, so, and reproductive behavior also is very often dependent on sense of smell. So ocean acidification is impairing these kinds of things. There's a whole lot more attention being paid to the shell formation problem. Um, but I think in the long run, the behavior problems, because of impairing the sense of smell, will end up being more important because it's affecting not only shell forming animals, but it's affecting a much larger bunch of different animals. Oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. The bleaching of the coral reef is due to temperature increases. It's global warming. Uh, the speaker earlier mentioned that over 90% of the heat is going into the ocean, the heat from climate change. Over 90% goes into the oceans, which means here on land, we're not warming up as much as we otherwise would. But, you know, from the standpoint of the things that live in the ocean, it's warming up much faster. And uh, there are thermal limits to what any animal species or population can tolerate. And what happens to corals, corals are the canaries in the coal mine here. Corals, many species, are very sensitive to temperature. And when the temperature gets too high, oh, let me back up a little bit, coral animals, are tiny little things that look like sea anemones, and they make, they secrete a shell, calcium carbonate. So you see what's called coral, it's just a skeleton, right? But inside all the little holes in that skeleton, they're individual little animals. These individual little animals have inside themselves single one cell algae plants that photosynthesize and give most of the nutrition to these little coral animals. These little coral animals also have tentacles. That's why I'm wiggling my fingers around. They have tentacles and they can catch food also. So they get food from two sources. One is catching food and one is the photosynthesis of these little algae inside them. When it gets too hot, the little algae get leave. So the animal is dependent on its own food catching. Some species can catch enough on their own to survive. But many coral species really need those algae to make, to, to make the food for them by photosynthesis and cannot do it well enough on their own. Those are the ones that are going to die. Now, what, so bleaching means those algae have gone. So the, uh, the coral looks pale white, just like you know a piece of coral skeleton. A normally living coral has a brownish or bluish or, you know, has a color to it. It's not pale white. Bleached algae is pale white. Bleached does not mean dead right away. If the temperature goes down enough, algae can come back and they can survive. But if it stays too hot for too long, it's dead. And um, that's what happened last year and the year before at the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. And huge areas of the Great Barrier Reef died because it stayed too hot for too long. And why does that matter? The living reef supports fishes and lobsters and a whole host of other marine life. The coral reef is the one of the most diverse and productive kinds of ecosystems on the planet. And it also supports the economy, as I said earlier, in many parts of the world for um, fishing, for scuba diving, for snorkeling, for boating, for whatever. And, um, if it were a beautiful forest that were chopped down, people would relate to it right away. 
problem is it's under the water, and most people have never seen it. But um, there is a wonderful movie. I want to make a plug. I had nothing to do with this movie, but it's called Chasing Carl. And it's about a team of filmmakers and, and scientists who went and were able to film the event of the bleaching. And, um, you know, it's a movie you should bring some tissues. Uh, it's, you don't usually cry over the death of a Carl, but it's a beautifully made movie and really tragic. Well, sea levels are rising. One thing is that when water, or any, when water is warmer, it expands. That's the basic principle of physics. So the level goes up because water is warmer. It's also getting warmer because of melting glaciers and melting ice on land runs down into the water. So you're getting more water coming in where there hadn't been water before. So those are the two things that are causing sea levels to rise. Why should we worry about it? We have lots of cities and towns around the world that are right on the coast. And we are already seeing places like Miami, Miami Beach, underwater, even on sunny days. It's not a matter of storms and flooding. It's some sunny days when the tide is high, it's on the streets. And it's true many other places. Um, there are small island countries that are making their plans to move elsewhere because their country low-lying, small islands, Kiribati, uh, Tuvalu, something in the Pacific Island, they are planning, they're going to be leaving their homeland because their homeland is going to be underwater. Um, a higher sea level means that when you get a hurricane, it's starting out higher, so the storm surge is going to be that much worse and the damage is going to be that much worse because your starting point is higher to begin with. And it's not just that. It's the, the natural habitats at the edge of the water. Salt marshes. Salt marshes are an amazing group of plants and associated animals that live part-time underwater when it's high tide and part-time in the air when it's low tide. And they are living in a certain range. When you get, as the water goes up, what can a marsh do? A marsh either has to rise up to keep up or move inland. And in order to rise up, you've got to be able to collect enough sediments to increase the level. And some can and some are not getting enough sediments. And then the alternative is moving inland but if you're certain places, you're going to run into a street or a pavement or a town, um, and there's nowhere to go. So someone coined the term coastal squeeze for what's happening to salt marshes as the sea level rise. Now, why should we care about salt marshes? Salt marshes are protecting us they are a buffer against storms and winds for people living inland of the salt marshes. Would a healthy salt marsh have protected lower Manhattan from Sandy? No. But it will protect to some degree from some storms. Um, and it also is very productive. And if you like bird watching, that's where birds are. Salt marshes are also um, nurseries for many important fish. So the baby fish are living there, and then they go into deeper water later. There's a whole, it's a very important community, both for the marine environment and people. And they're at great risk for sea level rise. So not just damaging houses, although that certainly makes, re resonates with more people than salt marshes, but the salt marshes resonates with me.